Hey guys, still here, and welcome to Surviving the Aftermath. Surviving the Aftermath is a new game that is coming out, uh, I don't know, sometime 2020, I guess. It's currently in early access. And it's a game where you build your own colony after the world has ended. Now, the world has ended has, of course, many different explanations, many different causes, and many different ways to build the lore around it. Um, from what I've been able to gather from the game, it has... Um, well, it's semi-nuclear holocaust, semi-weather um, effects, natural disasters. A couple of things out of the way. Um, one, this is a um, key that I requested from the dev, so it is not something that I had to put my own money into. Um, two, it's an Epic Store exclusive, so if that's, or at least it appears to be. It is uh, something that turns you off, then uh, by all means stop watching the video because you probably won't be interested in the game anyway. Um, and the game <clears throat> is early access. Now, I'm not exactly opposed to early access um, because recently it seems like everybody's early, or everything is early access. Whether you're looking at uh, a game like Surviving the Aftermath, which is uh, launching an early access so they can get fans involved and develop along with the fans, um, or whether you're looking at a game like Borderlands 3, for example. I'm not saying Borderlands 3 is early access, but that game needed some patches fixing and balancing. So, in a way, either you slap on the label early access and you keep patching, or you don't and you still keep patching. Um, I think that this game does have potential, early access or otherwise. It also does mean that probably some features have not quite been fleshed out, um, things might not be in there that you would normally expect, and of course the version that you're currently seeing here on screen, uh, I'm on uh, 1.0.2.4996, could be drastically different from what you're going to be getting by the time that the game actually releases. Anyway, um, surviving the aftermath, let's start a new game. Starting a new game is actually um, an interesting process because it allows you to set up your whole environment and your whole game, basically, in a way that you think is ideal. So we're going to start with the environment. There are only a few who remember the great spark, or the spark that started it all. A chain reaction of global catastrophes wiped out most of the planet's population and made people turn against each other. Those who are left must now survive the aftermath in this post-apocalyptic world. And over here you got three options. You can say, hey, the planet is a barren wasteland. It's a hot and dry climate, but you have very little fertile soil. The world is desolate and unforgiving, average, and more fertile soil. And the easiest one is 40% fertile soil and temperature or temperate and humid. And up here you can see how this changes the difficulty of the game. <coughs> So we got 6%, 11, and 17. I'm gonna go with the medium one at the world is desolate and unforgiving. Catastrophes. Slowly but surely, modern civilizations crumbled as catastrophes kept swooping across the continents. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Cities were destroyed and the planet itself suffered permanent damage. But the worst has passed and it's time to rebuild, which adds a little bit of uh, difficulty penalty. Contamination level is 20% and you got some occasional catastrophes. Still a dangerous world, but will prevail. Common, 35% contamination, or if you want to go really contaminated and have frequent catastrophes, it feels like the apocalypse never ended. I'm going to go with the second one. Resources. Everyone has their breaking point. Eventually it is not enough just to survive through the day. People need hope, and there finally is some. It's been a long road to get there, but that which was before can now be left in the past. Now this um, indicates how many starting resources you have, which can be either plentiful, in which case you sort of escape or leave a bunker, or you can go, no, we've been walking for ages and this is where they stop, and you have almost nothing. I'm going to go once again with the middle version, the trusted car finally broke down. Survivors. These are your colonists, um, your population, if you will. The people around you are the thin red line which keeps the group alive. They are far from perfect, but everyone has made it this far. You can trust them with your life, and they trust you with theirs. Now you can have hardened individuals who thrive in this world, which is a good group of eight adults and four children, 
It's a good starting group. Uh, all the way down to a group of ambiguous misfits with six adults and two children. I'm going to go with this. I'm going to have a very small starting pool, which is definitely going to up the difficulty quite a bit. As you can see, it goes from 33% to 50. Challenge. Now, there will be challenges to your colony, um, mostly external. Not just the weather that we saw in catastrophes, but also the challenges of bandits. Because, as you might imagine, not everybody in the apocalypse is out to play nice. These survivors will face challenges both large and small, some caused by bandits, others because of their own actions. There are also there, yeah, there are also other societies in the world that won't hesitate to strike back if you look at them the wrong way. Um, I think easy exploration is not quite the way to go, because in a world like this, I imagine that you would have quite a few of these bands of uh, bandits. So I'm going to go with numerous challenges. Gatekeeper. The gate is a very important aspect of the game, and I'll go into this um, potentially in the second video that I do on this. But the gate allows you to interact with the world and to um, get new colonists or survivors, uh, get specialists and all sorts of other goodies. Life is unfair, but sometimes it feels like you are not alone. Whether it is an invisible guardian or just pure fate, but it sure feels like someone is watching over us. And again, you can go for uh, Architect, which is lenient and helpful, Survivalist or Chaotic. I'm going to go for Survivalist. Then we have the visuals. And this is where you can set up the flag for your colony. Um, you can go for a hardened group of bandits, for example. Like, don't fuck with us. In this case, I think that is not uh, really the way that I want to play it. I'm going to go with... Uh, Let's say a symbol of hope. Um, enter your colony name somewhere. Uh, we are um, the Phoenix Project. Not related to Phoenix Point, but we're trying to rebuild from the ashes and start civilization anew. Uh, and we have a motto, from the ashes we shall rise. Continue. The game then gives you a summary. Uh, these are the settings that you picked. Are these correct? And interestingly, you can only go back to main menu or start the game. Uh, it's not like you can click on any of these and say, nope, this is not what I want. So this is just the game saying, okay, this is what you picked. Um, either start all over again or go to the start of the game. And this is something that I hope they change so that you can click on these various buttons and then decide, hey, no, sorry, I don't want the resources to be this low. Um, I want the resources to be a little higher. And by the way, I thought I didn't pick seven adults and three children, but six adults and two children. But see, now I cannot go back and change that. Early access. This, by the way, is the gate that I've been able to tell from a couple hours of gameplay to get... So it's just this gate. Okay, <clears throat> here we are. Um, lots of indicators on the screen. Top over here we have all the resources. Now... I'm going to go through them pretty quick. We have happiness. Um, everybody's homeless at the moment, so we got a pretty big happiness penalty. We have um, a population of eight, consisting of six carriers and two children. Um, carriers mean that they don't actually have a job, and they're just ferrying supplies from one point to another, provided that there is such a thing. So, for some reason, the game in the previous step told me, hey, you got seven... Um, or nine population consisting of seven workers or seven adults and two children. Or what was it? Um, yeah, I think seven and two or seven and three. And now I have six and two. Oh, well. We have 45 food. We're consuming six each day. And we're not producing any. So that's going to be a priority. Water, we have 300 of and we're consuming eight. Um, <clears throat> this is more towards later game uh, events where you actually have power. We have planks, basically wood. We have concrete, plastic, metal, fiber, parts. These are going to be used for higher tier buildings. Components, again, higher tier stuff um, and electronics. Further electronics, fun box. Um, take this as you will, but from what I've seen, these things can be used to construct culture buildings of sorts or entertainment buildings that then boost the happiness. We have tools. 
if the game actually allows me to point those out. <clears throat> Tools, uh, we consume eight, but it seems like you don't quite consume these once a day. So the consumption rate isn't quite clear. Then we have clothes. Um, we have a couple in store. And at this point, every colonist does come with clothing, which provides them defense from the elements. Um, if these run out, then your colonists have a greater chance to get sick. So that is something that you really have to keep in mind. And it is not something you can overlook. You cannot have people go around in, for example, uh, bad climates and hope that their jackets hold out. They're just going to get sick. When they do get sick, they're going to need medicine. We have a couple of those. And finally, we have science points. Now, to link this to what it says over here, the tech tree. Um, the tech tree is, from what I've seen, quite advanced. There's quite a lot of stuff to unlock. you got food, production, colony, security, and exploration. Um, from food, for example, you can go to communal eating, all the way down to chef training. And chef training unlocks the mess hall, which prepares large amounts of meals for hungry colonists. Of course, this probably will require that you build your own food. Or rather, that you have some in store. Production, um, energy production, this, as I mentioned, is more of a late tier uh, way to produce power. But then again, these are large solar panels. These are just standard solar panels and a small wind turbine. Colony, communal living, upgrades the level of housing that you have all the way down to couch potato, where you have nothing short of a movie theater and a game arcade at the end of the world. Security. Um, gives you more storage options and includes a field hospital. And exploration gives you better bartering through a trade center and a disaster forecast. Because radar now apparently picks up uh, electric storms and meteors. So that's the tech tree. Now over here we have a uh, couple of notifications slash warning indicators on the left. Eight colonists are currently homeless. Build more shelters. The fact that they're homeless... Um, this says homeless colonists are forced to live without a shelter. They are more susceptible to get injured, exhausted, or catch any of the deadly conditions. Long periods of living under polluted skies also affects their happiness. So my first order of business is going to be to set up a couple of tents. What else do we have? Um, over here you got the menu button. We have the radio stations, which is the different sort of music that you can get in the game. We have statistics, which gives you a very large overview of everything that's happening in your colony. Uh, the build menu, I'll look into that in a sec. We've got the specialists, currently I don't have any. The tech tree I mentioned, and the help feature. And over here, we got the world map. Because the Phoenix Project is not the only thing that's currently out here. These are all other sectors of the world that I can explore. From what I've been able to gather, you cannot actually build in them, or maybe not yet. But what you can do is send specialists and, for example, they could be finding um, an electronics facility over here, an electronics um, factory. And then you can send your specialist to loot that. Now, this is just a small part of the world, because as you can see, there is quite a bit to explore. This can also... Um, well, you can find bandits along the way which, of course, are not going to go happily out of their way and uh, give you all the stuff that they have. So you might have to go in and take it by force, if you so desire. Um, or you can go through maybe other means of getting rid of the bandits. All right, build menu. This is, of course, for a um, city builder slash end of the world simulator. Rather important. Starting on the left, roads, currently just removing roads and dirt roads. Uh, tents, there's a difference between a tent and an emergency shelter. As you can see, this thing takes two wood and five plastic under construction costs. It provides two housing for colonists, uh, provides no protection against radiation and is easily destroyed by catastrophes. So through the tech tree, as I just showed you, <coughs> you can upgrade that to have shanties and tenements. But that takes me 100 research points, and I don't have those. So for the moment, tense it is. Emergency shelter um, is, relatively speaking, a little cheaper. But, at the same time, colonists are less likely to reproduce. So, less population growth. Then we have a couple of storage options. A stockpile, a food storage, and a warehouse. 
uh, we have various ways of getting food. From a trapper who brings out animals to a fishing hut to small fields. And this is what I'm going to go with first. Just a small field to uh, grow some crops. Water. A water well and a water tower. This one uh, just produces water and this one stores the water. Then we got the resources and these are critical. You got the scrapper. The scrapper can turn metal and junk into actually usable metal. So that goes into this stockpile. We have the recycler who does the same thing for plastic. We have the sawmill who does the same thing from trees and then the forester who actually plants back trees. So you can have um, a sawmill and a forester working the same area. This one plants the trees back and this one takes them down. Then products. We got a tool shop which uh, creates tools out of metals. So this is um, for those of you very structure oriented. This is the one that tears up uh, combined with the uh, recycler. Sorry, with uh, the scrapper. So the scrapper takes metal and turns it into metal sheets. And this one turns it into tools. And the tools go over here to be used by your colonists. And the tailor does the same thing, but from fiber and turns it into clothing. Medical. We got a medical tent. Uh, heals people back up. And a burial pit in case the healing part is uh, far over. Finally, exploration. And this is where the gate comes into play. The gate can only be set up over here. This is the only part where you can interact with the rest of the world. Well, short of specialists, that is. This is also the part where um, traders can show up, new colonists, but also bandits, I imagine. And finally, we have decorative stuff. Uh, I'm generally not too big on these. I consider them a big resource sink. As at the moment, from what I've been able to gather, they only just decorate. And they don't actually give any sort of happiness bonus whatsoever. Okay, so that was the introduction. Uh, now let's get to work. What you can also see on the screen is over here a plastic pile. This is something that the recycler can work with. So I could tell a recycler to go over here and start um, going through this trash heap in hopes of finding some good plastic. We also have over here a bit of small concrete. We have a couple of planks, and these look like just standard planks and pallets and boxes, which you can then turn into wood. You don't actually have to harvest it like you would a tree. It doesn't require a sawmill. You can just bring it over to this, the stockpile. If I click the stockpile, you can see everything that the stockpile can interact with. The planks, the concrete, uh, a large concrete ruin, uh, a small concrete ruin, etc. The circle indicates the work area. So where are your carriers, as they're currently called, uh, actively working? And what I think I need early on is not so much concrete and wood, maybe a little bit more plastic, but that's not something that these guys can do. I'm just going to go for stuff that is closest to my colony. So I move the work area and now they're going to go over here and pick this up. You do see that it does not interact with the plastic pile. So that's not something that they can take from directly. That's why I need a recycler. Now these smudges over here and here and here are all nuclear waste. This is not very good for your colonists. Uh, must be cleaned before the soil can be used. But it requires an operational environmental station. And you have to first unlock that from the tech tree. Um, what else do we have? We have more plastic. Uh, ah, here. Metal. A pile of metal scrap. And this is where you send a scrapper. So that's the other uh, way that you gather stuff. And you set their work area to be over here. And then they start gathering the metal. If this pile is done, it's done. It's not like it's going to respawn or anything. But fortunately, the area where you can build and harvest and gather is really quite sizable. Um, at some point, I was just looking through my area and I was having a pretty hard time finding my own colony again. Uh, much like now, actually. Because there is just <laughs> a lot of area. And one thing that I'm missing and that they might still implement is a minimap. This is the switch to the world map. And then I can click on the Phoenix project, but unfortunately it doesn't take me back to the colony. No, you just have to look for your colonists uh, by hand. So, 
let's see, where did I put my colony? Ah, here we are. All right. Now, from what I've gathered, it doesn't matter how close you start building to the gate. Um, I don't know how aggressive uh, bandits are going to be if they just break down the gate and then start swarming into your colony. But um, I don't really want to have my houses too close anyway. So I'm going to put a couple of tents up. Uh, let's create a simple road structure here. Not, oops. Uh, roads are free, by the way. So not there. Not there. And throw down some tents. One. And if you hold shift, you throw down more tents. Now each tent takes me two wood and five plastic. So I can build a total of four. And at that point, I'm pretty much out of plastic. There. Uh, actually, I want to have a bit of spacing between these two. Because the roads definitely boost your walking speed. Now, you could argue, hey, why are you building these things so damn close to this uh, nice pile of nuclear waste? Well, I like my colonists glowing. No. Uh, from what I've seen, it doesn't actually impact them at all. Now, as for the colonists, you can see them all taking plastic and wood from the supply pile. And they are then going to one of the structures. You can see that they have the materials that they need brought to the construction site. And then the building is constructed. I think that more builders do make the process faster, and uh, you can even set this as a priority, which indicates how fast it's going to get resources, but also how fast it's going to get built. And if you're running a little low on actual colonists who can build stuff, you can say, no, this is not really a priority. Um, if at some point I have some extra time, that'd be perfect, but otherwise um, it's all fine. Now two tents are complete. You can see they don't all look the same. I quite like that. It's not like you have this row of houses which are all exactly the same. From what I have seen thus far, uh, they have these two models. So this one and that one. And this one's just a replica again. Um, and this one looks an awful lot like the first one over there. Now a couple of my colonists are uh, scavenging stuff from here. You can see that Isabella is currently carrying stuff from the small concrete ruin back to the supply pile. Speaking of colonists, they all have their own name, their own picture, although their pictures do get reused. No workplace currently, which means that they are now, as they are called in game, a carrier. Not a carrier of a disease, but a carrier of stuff. They bring back stuff from one spot to another. They also have personality. Large and stocky by nature, taking full advantage of that. There's little finesse in their actions. Just a lot of muscle. Now, interestingly, this woman is a catastrophe fan. She is happier during catastrophes. Uh, she's also a bleeder. Refusal to rest prevents wounds from healing properly, so she doesn't have as many or as much health. And she has the genetic lottery, which means that she has faster injury recovery. So she might bleed more. But at least she recovers from her bleeding a little faster. And this is the same for all other colonists. All have these little traits. Be positive, be negative. Um, some, well, sometimes you strike out, sometimes you don't. Okay, um, I think that it's time to build a recycler station. And a scrapper. Also, food. Because we are currently uh, pretty quickly draining our water supply. So let's start with the water. I'll set up one water well. And extend this road a little further. And we're going to set up a scrapper. Which as you can see is quite the large structure. It takes 12 wood and 10 concrete. Which I still have in store so that's perfect. And a recycler. Now, these structures are going to take quite a while to build because they're fairly big. Um, they each require at least one colonist to be operational. If you don't have any of those, they simply don't work. Which, in some cases, is fine. I mean, I can have a medical tent built and not actually use it because there is nobody injured. Uh, but at some point, you might have more buildings than you have colonists and they are all, well, mission critical. In which case, you're going to have to make a choice. Do I go for uh, more people building clothing faster? 
and temporarily shut down food production because I have that much or I'm not going to go for fewer tools. It's all up to you. Now let's set up some food. A uh, small field or two. One here and one there. And I want the row to extend this way. Some people are really, really good at making these perfect looking uh, colonies or building places or whatever. Um, I usually just go for a block by block structure. <laughs> I'm not that creative in that sense. Now the scrapper is almost done. There you go. Uh, scrapper complete. But it says, hey, sorry, we don't have any materials in the current area. So we're going to have to move the work area over to a viable area where we can scrap or we can find scrap. And that's, again, move work area over there. And I really hope that they don't accidentally wander into the nuclear waste. Same thing for the plastic. So that's the recycler. And that's going to go here. And you can see that they have assigned one colonist to work here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Joshua who is working there. If I want to speed up production, I can assign another one. Um, but I also need people to man my fields. So I'm going to have one person working here, one there, one here, and one here. And two runners who pick up stuff from the various, let's say, easily accessible resource piles. Let's speed it up a little bit more. Oh, and I will need somebody at some point who is going to go into um, foresting. A sawmill. Let's see. Uh -huh. Here we have uh, Joshua working away at the plastic trash pile over here. Huh? And uh, there we go. I think it's the end of the workday currently. Yeah, he didn't actually take any plastic with him. Now, um, <clears throat> for small fields and potentially larger fields and greenhouses and whatnot, you can select a particular crop that you want to make. If you don't do that, nothing is going to happen. So I'm going to select, um, let's go with, since I have enough food for the moment, I'm going to go with potatoes and potatoes again. These grow slightly slower, but they harvest more. These grow at a normal rate, but have a lower harvest, so a lower yield. Okay, uh, we have water coming in. We have food currently going out because it's going to take quite a while before these fields actually produce something. Uh, let's just speed things along. And over here you can see it's currently day zero. The day is over and we are moving on to day one. Or at least one would think so. I'm not exactly sure what these people are doing here. Do you not have a job or... <clears throat> are you not tired or what? Now, all these things have a progress bar. You can see that the field here is planting. And the same thing you can see for other stuff. Uh, over here we have status working normally. Status working normally. They currently have four scrap. And they're going to then... Uh, or sorry, yeah, four metal. Uh, more Four metal scrap. And they're going to turn that into three pieces of metal. And... What's the other icon? The game doesn't quite explain that. It's not parts, I think. I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure. I do know that I'm producing stuff and I'm not consuming it, so the pile should be growing. But other than that, I can't quite tell you what exactly is going on here. Anyway, let's speed that along. Um, deposit depleted. We ran out of that. That's fine. Now we only have a couple of planks left, which should go pretty quick. And once these are gone, I'm going to move to uh, this area to pick up some more concrete and some more planks. There, it's all done. Move work area. There. And they're scurrying off and doing their stuff from these other piles. Now let's see if I can find mm -hmm. one of the children here, because I do have yeah. some. Huh? Um... Huh? Here, I think. Mm -hmm. Ah, gotcha. Uh, this is a kid, Oscar. Oscar is 
well, at some point going to grow up into an adult, uh, or at least at least by by physique, which means that he can do work, and you can put him to work on any of the various projects that you have. Again, they have personality, and they do bring this with them to um, later game stages. Now, the one thing I would like to show off uh, as well is the gate. I need 20 planks. I need uh, 15 concrete, which I have. I need a little bit of plastic and some metal. Okay, I'm going to set this to medium priority. And you're going to find that these guys pick up their stuff and bring it to the gate. Ah, and this is also important. Uneven ground. Suddenly muffled cries for help are coming from one of the shelters. You rush in to look for what is going on there. Uh, instead of a colonist, you find a large hole in the middle of the floor. The shelter was apparently built on top of a small sinkhole, which gave way and swallowed one of the inhabitants. A makeshift ladder should help getting the colonist out without injuries. This is where you get quite a few options. Uh, you're going to see these random events pop up quite a bit. You can build a makeshift ladder at the expense of three planks, or you can say, sorry, tough it up and climb up. If they climb up and they fall, you have an injured colonist. And normally uh, a fractured leg is annoying enough as is. But if you don't have a medical tent and it's the end of the world, then, well, a broken leg can have all sorts of nasty side effects, including death. So this is something that I'm usually pretty careful with if I want to conserve my colonists and their health. So I'm gonna make a uh, makeshift ladder. You order a nearby colonist to fetch planks from the stockpile. Together you fashion a set of crude but functional ladders to lower down to the sinkhole. The fallen colonist climbs up rattled but otherwise unscathed. The hole is filled and carefully covered to prevent any further surprises. Cost me three planks, but I get a bit more happiness in the colony. I don't quite know what the happiness booster is. Um, I haven't worked that out, so it might do, um, I don't know, it might make your colonists more productive, which I think would make sense. Uh, let's have a quick look at the help feature, your colonists, blah blah blah, that's about the colonists. What about colonists' happiness? Dead colonists, action points. Nope. Doesn't say anything about the happiness state of your colonists. So as you can see, also the help uh, menu still needs to be built out further. So at the moment, I've done quite a bit of just exploring and seeing what goes where in this game. Now, I want to wrap up the video with having the gate completed. So let's set this priority to high. And at night, they don't work. They just sleep. And some people have apparently deep conversations which go on for hours and hours. Uh, I hope that these people are going to be able to work tomorrow, which would be nice. There we go. And people are now starting to bring the required construction materials over here. Which should allow it to get built, but I might not have enough planks. Nope, insufficient construction materials for the gate. So they're going to have to pick up some planks first. And then continue building the gate. It's not like you can start a production project and uh, have only, let's say, 75% of parts. And then start construction and wait for it to finish. You need all the construction materials and then it's going to start production. So you need to make sure you have everything that you need to build a structure. Now the gate, as I have mentioned, is the only way of contact with the well, the outside world at large. It's, uh, as the game here tells you... Whoops. Oh, shit. There we go. A uh, group of survivors at the gates. People can be remarkable. We met a group that had built up a settle that built a settlement into the trees. A bit cumbersome for sure, but easy to defend. Now, these guys come with two adults, no children. They bring with them 13 protein bars, which is food, medicine, and clothing. Which is perfect. More importantly, they bring a specialist. And you can see that one over here. This is Platy, A great Nordic adventurer who claims to have been the Empress of Sweden. Right. Before the apocalypse, she's an enthusiastic city designer who would not mind taking her troops into great wars. She also claims to have been part of a wizarding cult and to have helped aliens dominate the galaxy. 
all from Sweden, I imagine. A uh, very talented person indeed. Now, they all have stats and stat bonuses. Um, for example, she's not very good at attacking, but she is very good at scavenging. So she's going to get a resource multiplier if you send her on scavenging missions. Uh, and as you can see here, effectiveness in the colony for leadership. So I think the, I don't know, the production levels of colonists, something like that. Um, it says coming, so they're still working on this. I'm going to accept these people. Of course, this means that I have a bigger workforce. But at the same time, I need more tents. Because now I have, once again, homelessness. Last thing. This is the map. And now I have a specialist. And I can have the specialist look around. So let's scout out this uh, marshland biome. And see what's out there. Look at that. Electronic store. It has zero danger. And I can get a total of 19 electronics from that. Uh, that's these things, the components. So, useful for producing or consuming energy. Or anything that has to do with that. Now, they have action points, these colonists, or these specialists. Currently, she has zero. She started out with, I think, six. Uh, each step and then scouting takes action points. And I can run all the way over there, but not now because I'm out of action points. So, she needs to rest for a bit. And that usually takes a day. And then she can continue her journey. If she gets killed, uh, so be it. I don't think that you're going to be able to resuscitate that one. Anyway, um, this is the first look and introduction, if you will, to surviving the aftermath. I really quite like it. I think it has a lot of potential. It is a city builder uh, slash civilization builder, but with a twist. And I will be continuing this with further episodes. So if you like the series, then by all means, stay tuned for more. Um, Again, it is an Epic Store exclusive, which I know might turn some people off. Although, actually, I'm not even sure if it's an exclusive. I just wasn't able to find it on Steam. But you might be able to. Um, so let's not put that part in stone just yet. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, then please consider becoming a patron, because I can always use your support. Link down below in the description. And, of course, I shall see you guys soon on the next video.